all, welcome to this uh, very, very basic guide to using a MOSFET as a switch. Uh, in particular, uh, a logic level triggered MOSFET. Um, uh, reason being, uh, I'm sure many of you out there are using microcontrollers such as the PIC, Arduino, STM, Motorola. Uh, all of these uh, can uh, output a, a logic level uh, pin rise and fall. And, and th in this video I'll demonstrate how to use um, an N-channel uh, MOSFET as a switch. If you're using a P-channel or want to use a P-channel, the link to that video is in the description. It should be on the top right of, of the screen uh, right right now. Now, why would you want to use a, a MOSFET as a switch when you know a microcontroller such as the Atmel uh, can put out uh, power on one of its pins um, at the at the blip of a, a piece of software? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, well, a couple of reasons. The, the, the first of which is, is, is pretty practical. It's um, uh, your, your microcontroller will have limits. It has a limit on the amount of um, current it can put out on a particular pin. It will have an overall limit on the combined current uh, that can be produced on all the pins in aggregate. And of course, the voltage is restricted to usually around about 5, 5.5 volts. Um, I think the Atmel is about 40 milliamps a pin, um, but overall you can only draw something like 200 milliamps uh, from from the pin. So that's the first practical limitation. Uh, second, um, it, it's it's important that um, you can turn things off. Um, from the microcontroller itself. Um, other, other, how do I how do I explain this? Um, well, probably best to show you in a, a picture. Let me get a, another camera up. Oh, emails, emails. Um, yeah, over here. I'll, I'll, there's a there's a board I, I'm using right now to model BMS software, battery management system software. Uh, the 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 test uh, processor goes in here. There's a display there, there's a button there to engage the sensors, power up the display, and then um, read the sensors, put the information on the display, then power the sensors and the display off again and put the processor back into sleep. And the magic is done from the software in the microcontroller talking to a, a separate power rail using this MOSFET here. And that's a big beefy MOSFET, that, that can hold... I can switch up to 50 amps. So I don't need to use that. It's just I have a bunch of these lying around because of doing stuff with battery management systems. In fact, here's one over here. Um, this is this is in debug mode right now. This is another uh, MOSFET in there. You can see uh, the back. It's got a switch in there, and this one is coming on automatically every eight seconds. I've got the watchdog timer, and that's the essence of microcontrollers. You really want to keep the damn thing in comatose state as long as possible, uh, particularly for mobile applications, and only wake up when it needs to do something. In this case, I've got this watchdog timer waking up automatically every eight seconds because I've got some housekeeping routines I need to do. But I've also got the button here, which is a, a user interface. I press on that. It'll go out and read the sensors and give me what I want. And then, hey presto, it powers down the voltage divider and um, turns off the power display. Um, fantastic um, uh, and yes the watchdog timer will pop up again at any second now but that that's only for my housekeeping routines so keeping stuff switched off and don't forget every sensor you've got is um, is a uh, I'll switch this off every sensor you've got is a voltage divider and every voltage divider has has a current leak so that that for me is the primary reason for using MOSFETs is to turn off stuff I'm not using while the microprocessor is is, is in sleep mode um, incredibly useful now why wouldn't you use something like um, a, a relay well yeah well you, you can indeed uh, and I find it um, difficult to criticise relays. They're, they're incredibly simple electromechanical devices, but they do produce voltage spikes. They are quite large as well. Here's a here's a, an array of eight of them, and heavy, um, and they do wear out some electromechanical devices. But if they work for you, please use them. That's great. But if you want to go solid state, then let me show you um, how to use the N channel as a switch. I'm using the 2N7000 or BS170 uh, simply because they are the most popular um, 
the hobbyist MOSFETs on the planet and they're dead stupidly cheap. Look at that! 20 for 99 pence, that's a dollar thirty. And considering it's the greatest invention ever, 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 you are excused for having a big smile on your face for realising you live on a planet where the best of man's efforts can be had so cheaply. So to round this demo of getting this thing switching things off uh, and on again, um, I'm gonna gonna use a, an AT Tiny 85, uh, one of these. I've got this thing already set up to program the AT Tiny 85, and all we need is um, uh, a bit of code to toggle one of the ports. I'll use um, pin physical pin five on this, which is PB1 in Atnal terminology. So over to the screen. Uh, this is a blank sketch, so I'll just uh, let the DDRs know that we want to uh, have a pin mode on one of outputs um, and then we're going to just toggle this thing high and low so that's a digital write in Arduino speak so it's high and then we'll just um, pause for uh, one second so we can see uh, the fruits of our labour and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, switch, I'll switch an LED well why not uh, uh, and then I'll just copy those few lines and then we'll upload that to the uh, Arduino. Now if you want to see how you, no, see Arduino, the AT Tiny 85. If you want to see how to use a, an Arduino as an in-systems programmer for the AT Tiny 85 then see the video in the description or it should be on the top right of the screen now which also gives you a uh, analog, uh, sorry a serial output to the um, Arduino terminal. Great, okay so um, now what we've got is this uh, AT Tiny 85 program to put a pulse out on pin 6 whenever it's connected to a power supply. So let me just get rid of all this rubbish here. Um, uh, so reset pin gone, that's that gone, excellent. And okay, we're going to have to, we'll power this separately away from the Arduino just to make things looking a little bit cleaner. So um, this is our input rail here. <coughs> This is the, uh, I had two of these a second ago, I must have sneezed and lost one. This is the uh, 2N7000. Um, what I'll do is, I'll put this in now. Spread these pins out a little bit. Oops, a bit too far. And let me put a diagram on the screen now as well. Okay, there you go, that, that's how it's uh, kind of uh, wired up. Um, in, in terms of left to right to these pins on, on the 2N7000 VS170, it is um, drain, gate and source. They often put the gate in the middle, but it's not... Oh, there's the other one. They, they often put the gate in the middle, but they don't always do that. So, given this is an end channel, we get our source from the negative rail, and the drain is a negative end of a positive-negative connection. Um, we'll use a yellow wire to connect the pin 5, which is the pin we're toggling, to the centre pin, the gate. Let's take um, the um, drain, let's take the source and connect it to the uh, negative rail. There we go. And let's connect the uh, drain and, okay, I'm using a red wire. It is in fact um, a negative uh, output, but uh, I'm short of black wires, I think, yeah. All right, uh, and then what, well, I'll tell you what, we won't do anything at the moment. I'll pull in this separate power supply over here um, and we'll hook it up. Um, there we go. Now, we'll need a, a, a resistor and an LED to see what's coming out of this thing. Is it being switched? Is, is, is the drain being switched on and off? So, um, this is the negative, don't forget, so we want the positive into the positive rail and we want the uh, resistor strapped to the output of drain. 
Okay. Uh, right, the next thing to do is power this on. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Let's 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 do the to do the full picture. Let's put pin pin five into the gate, so we're we're, we're good to go right from the start. And there we go. We've got it flashing on and off a second at a time. Um, um, now, th th there's a couple of things I, I should mention uh, about this the two and seven and MOSFETs in in general. Um, this thing, I think, can only handle, I don't know, about 200 milliamps to 2N7000. Uh, it got to 60 volts, um, so, so, you know, pretty, pretty beefy on, 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 the, on, the, uh, on the pressure, but, but on, the, uh, on the current, a little bit on the low side. The same as overall what a, uh, an AT, uh, an Atmel can do. Um, so if you want higher current, then, then go ahead, just choose the right FET that's, that's right for you. Just make sure that the gate threshold is within logic level limits, i.e. 1.8 to, well not 1.8, 3.3, shall we say, to, to 5, 5, 5 volts, something like that. Uh, and that way it should work okay with the logic level pins. Um, plenty to choose from. The one I showed you earlier on my board, that's uh, I think a 50 amp uh, switch, so uh, choose the one you need carefully, but hopefully a great way for you to learn how to use MOSFETs and to keep your power uh, consumption low when you're using mobile applications. I hope that's been helpful. If it has, give me a thumbs up. Cheers!